For this video, we're going to be setting up a C2 redirector using TCP forwarding. We'll implement the TCP forwarding technique using SOCAT. Let's start with some context. We can see on the left hand side of the screen, the C2 server that we had shown earlier. We know that we have a listener on port 80 for Mythic. We also have a packet capture on the bottom part of the screen, which is capturing packets on any interface that is being sent from the C2 redirector to the C2 server. If we focus on the right hand side of the screen, we can see our Mythic web console. We're using the Apollo agent and we also are using the HTTP profile for our listener. If we look at the configuration of HTTP profile, we can see that we have port 80 being selected for the C2 agent to connect to. If we go into the configuration of the HTTP profile, we can see that we have an existing profile that is pointing to the IP address of our redirector, which is 192.168.1.155. We're also pointing in this profile to make sure that the callback port that the C2 agent is going to use is going to be port 80 TCP. If we close this and we take a look at the payloads that we have generated, we have a payload called redirector underscore HTTP underscore 80 underscore Apollo. If we go on to the details of this payload, we can take a look and see that this payload is going to be connecting using redirector profile that we have set up for HTTP mythic listener. We're seeing that it's using the IP address of our redirector, which I have on the top left hand side, and it's also using callback port 80 TCP. Essentially, the takeaway here is that this payload has been generated to connect listener configuration that we have using port 80 and using the redirector IP address. Let's take a look at our C2 redirector. In our C2 redirector, we know that the IP address is 192.168.155, as shown on the top left-hand side of the screen. However, if we are to send any traffic from our target machine to the C2 redirector, we can see how if we set up a packet capture on the C2 redirector, let's do that now. So we're capturing any packets that are sourced from the target or the C2 implant is going to generate heading to the C2 redirector using TCP dump. Now, what we're going to do, as we mentioned earlier, we have redirector the local record that resolves to IP 192.168.1.155. We're going to issue a web request and we see that traffic arriving in the C2 redirector. This traffic is sourced from IP address 192.168.1.192 and the destination in the IP header is 192.168.1.155 with a destination port of 80 TCP. Because there is no forwarding at the moment, we are getting a timeout. The TCP handshake occurs and the C2 redirector ends up sending a reset TCP flag packet that tells target to give up, we're not going to get any response. Now let's see what happens if we are to set up C2 redirection using SOCAT. And we use SOCAT to listen on port 80 on the redirector to fork every incoming connection so that we can support multiple connections and to forward the traffic to the IP address of our C2 server on the port 80, which is where we have the listener configured in Mythic. We have Mythic server running with IP address 192.1.166 and our listener on port 80. We also have a packet capture to see the traffic arriving at the C2 server. Now let's try again that web request from the target. We can see that traffic has been forwarded, arrived at the C2 redirector and been forwarded to the C2 server. Let's take a look at the first web HTTP GET request, which has a source IP address of 192.168.1.192. That is the source IP address of the target. It has a destination IP of 192.168.1.155 with a destination port of 80 TCP. We're seeing that it's a, guest a GET request, and this GET request has a user agent of PowerShell because we're issuing this web request using the invoke web request commandlet from PowerShell to a destination of the redirector.local. This is our redirector machine. This redirector machine, as we did in the previous step, is forwarding TCP packets using SOCAT. These packets are being forwarded to the C2 server. So let's take a look at bottom left part of the screen. Here we have the same web request that was issued with PowerShell on the target, and it has something slightly different. I want you to take a look at the IP header information here. We have source IP address 
in the redirector of the target machine, that is 192.168.1.192. But if we look at the C2 server, the same web request has a source IP address of 192.168.1.155. Now let's take a look at the destinations. In the C2 redirector, the destination of these packets is 192.168.1.155 with a destination port of 80 because this is an HTTP listener. But if you notice on the C2 server, the destination IP is also different. So on the C2 server, the traffic that is arriving from the target has completely different source IP address and completely different destination IP address. Why is that? Well, that is what Socket is doing. Socket is grabbing every packet that is arriving on the C2 redirector, rewriting the source IP address from the target machine IP address to its own IP address so that the C2 server knows to respond back to the C2 redirector instead of the target. Now, the other operation that Socket is doing with the forwarding is changing the destination IP address of the packets that are arriving on the C2 redirector that at that point have the IP address of the C2 redirector and changing them to the IP address of the C2 server. It keeps the destination port the same because that's what we indicated it to do with the socket command. But on the C2 server, the destination IP address is the C2 server destination IP address. What happens to the responses? So the C2 server responds to the C2 redirector with IP address as a source of the C2 server with the destination IP address of the C2 redirector. So the C2 server is not at any point talking directly to the target. The C2 server is talking to the C2 redirector. And we can see that here. If we look at response packets, we can see that source IP address of this response packets has the IP address of the redirector with a destination of the target. So this 404 not found is sourcing from the redirector, not from the C2 server. So the traffic flows the following. Target issues a web request. The web request reaches the C2 redirector. The web request is forwarded by the C2 redirector to the C2 server, and the C2 server responds, sends its response to the C2 redirector, and the C2 redirector sends it to the target. This can be a bit confusing. However, if we now run a payload, we can also see the same traffic arriving, and we can see how a callback will be registered by Mythic. Let's clear the packet captures. So before we run this payload, we have a packet capture on the redirector and we have a packet capture on the C2 server. Let's run the payload and see the traffic arriving into the C2 redirector and then being sent to the C2 server. As expected, the C2 implant connects to the C2 redirector and the C2 redirector forwards the same traffic to the C2 server. We see the same callback that is originated from the target register on the console of Mythic. If we take a look at the processes here, we have a process named with the same name of the file name of the C2 implant on the process ID that Mythic is registering. So this is the exact same callback we just executed from the payload on the target. If we interact with it, we can make the callback's frequency to be interactive or continuous. We can do that with the command sleep zero, and we'll see a lot of traffic being exchanged between the redirector and the server the next time that it checks in. As expected, we're seeing a constant chatter of traffic being sent from the target to the C2 redirector to the C2 server, and the same process back from the C2 server to the C2 redirector to the target. If instructed to make the callbacks occur every 15 seconds, that chatter will be reduced and traffic will only be originating from the target every 15 seconds. We can see how much time has elapsed from the Mythic C2 console. So now we'll have another connection and the same thing will occur every 15 seconds. This is all we have for this video. Thank you very much for watching.